Welcome to another episode of What is Hashimoto's with Dr. Martin Rutherford. To find out more on any of our topics or for information on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Rutherford, please visit us at whatishashimoto's.com. And now, here's Dr. Rutherford. The, uh, the, the holy grail of the medical community relative to your thyroid uh, dysfunction. And we're going to talk about TSH and Hashimoto's, okay? So TSH, uh, it's kind of interesting. I, I've been in this for a long time, probably since the very beginning of, of, of the understanding that Hashimoto's was causing most of these thyroid problems. I've, and I've had the opportunity to, um, to be involved in the evolution of thought on several things. Well, should you take thyroid medication? Should you not? Uh, the TSH isn't enough. You don't bother to do it because it really doesn't tell you anything other than about, about the immune system. And, and the whole evolution of understanding TSH, eventually I'm gonna do a talk on, on um, thyroid peroxidase enzymes, the TPO enzymes, uh, and, and, and just the evolution of thought on all those. So just keep that in mind if, I have, if you saw something in some of my other videos that are gonna contradict what I say right now, because it's kind of the latest stuff, okay? Thyroid stimulating hormone, basically people come in and they go, I have low thyroid. And I go, you have low thyroid or do you have low thyroid stimulating hormone? <laughs> Because low thyroid stimulating hormone um, uh, means that you have high thyroid function and vice versa. And without getting into all of that, it seems counterintuitive. But when your thyroid, it, the, the important point is, is when your thyroid function is going down, you're not making as much thyroid hormone. So, the, so there's this part of your brain that sends out a, a, a signal to another part of your brain to send out something called thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, to stimulate this lazy thyroid or this thyroid that's being destroyed so that it makes more hormone. So when you have high TSH, it's because your thyroid is like this and it can't make hormone and it's trying to stimulate it to make more hormone. That's a key understanding. Now, um, historically in the beginning, TSH was mainly a function of our understanding was it was a function of hypothyroid which was the medical understanding for the last hundred years however it's taken on kind of a new understanding in that uh, thyroid in Hashimoto's thyroid tissue is being damaged if I could show you some pictures of a I, I should do that if I could show you some pictures of a thyroid being damaged that's been excised and it's being that it would blow your mind as to how it looks and as the damage that's being done. And every time uh, you're getting attacked, sometimes you're getting a little teeny bit of damage, sometimes you're getting full-blown damage. Those of you who are having swelling, those of you who are having swelling that goes up and down, you're getting a lot of anxiety, you're getting a lot of damage. And so, so the TSH can be used to measure that damage. If the, if the thyroid stimulating hormone, one of the th things that thi thyroid stimulating hormone can tell you if you get it measured regularly, is how much da is damage being done? It's pretty simple. If you've been at this for 10 years and your TSH has been going like that every year, it goes higher and higher and higher. That means every year from the one time that you got, uh, so let's say from 2019 to 2020, it went higher, there was damage taking place over that entire period of time. And you're the person who they continue giving you a higher dosage of, of thyroid medication. So that TSH is a measure of, uh, of that. If the person who has, who has um, thyroid stimulating hormone every year, your thyroid hormone just stays the same, your TSHs are stays the same, that's a very stable thyroid. Even though you have Hashimoto's, it means that the damage is pretty baseline. It's like not. It's not a ton. So you might be the person who goes like, "Well, I got Hashimoto's, but I don't. I only have a few of those symptoms, and my and and you know my labs look good, and and, and but I have these other symptoms, and, and and well, the other symptoms are from other things that are happening from your thyroid, say slowing down your liver, or slowing down the ability to make blood blood cells, or slowing down the ability to make hydrochloric acid in your stomach. So TSH can be very valuable. The answer to the question is how often I should have it done if you are in a more hyperactive state. So if you have, let's say I just had one yesterday and, and, and it was a lady who's, 
whose thyroid was uh, swelling. And uh, we had made a couple of suggestions to her uh, uh, early on in treatment, and she followed those suggestions. And her thyroid has gone down like 60% already, okay? A thyroid that can swell and go down, swell and go down, maybe you get glands, and at the same time you're getting heart palpitations, maybe you're getting anxiety, inward trembling, insomnia, night sweats, that type of stuff. That's a thyroid that is um, very unstable. Um, it's a thyroid that is very active, and, and, that, and that thyroid is creating a lot of destruction. That immune response is creating a lot of destruction because you're getting all of those when your thyroid is, is destroyed, cells are destroyed, they go, they, they go out into your bloodstream along with the T3 and the T4 that's in them, and then you have too much thyroid in your system, and the next thing you know, the next thing you know, you're, you're getting these, these uh, um, symptoms, along with the fact, just the fact that, you're, that your immune system is flaring up. But, so you're getting a lot of destruction. You want to get that thyroid checked. If it's in treatment, you might wanna get the TSH checked every six weeks, because the TSH is going to go into, uh, it's, it's gonna go, uh, it's gonna go up the more damage that there is, okay? So you wanna check damage frequently, especially if you're in treatment. Most of our treatment protocols are anywhere from like, like six weeks to four or five months, just depending on how many, how many triggers, how many things you gotta go after, how many organs the person's missing, how many drugs they're taking, all that type of stuff. So you would wanna do it kind of maybe every six, to, at least the, at the very least, you would wanna do it every three months. I say this because most of you know, as I'm about to say, most of you know, you go to the doctor, they check you and they go, I'll see you in a year. During that period of time, you may go from being stable to being unstable and you won't know it. So I recommend my patients get, if they're, if they're relatively stable, and let's say we're done with treatment and they're doing well and they're relatively stable, I recommend they get their TSH checked every six months. I just think a year is too long. Maybe somewhere around six months, something happens. Maybe they get a new food sensitivity. Food sensitivities come and go. Maybe they get a new food chemical sensitivity. Things come and go. Um, you know, things happen. We're in a societal issue right now of so many things happening with the COVID, political upheaval, all these things. People are stressed. That actually, that actually can fire things up. And that could maybe be the threshold where now you start getting damage to the thyroid. You wanna know that. You wanna know that if so, if that happens, so if we're, we're done with care and that starts happening at six and a half months, we want to know that because there's a way to dampen that response as quickly as possible. So the TSH really gives us a, a powerful tool uh, to, to manage Hashimoto's. For those of you who watched it, you, you probably heard me say Hashimoto's is multifactorial. There's a lot of moving pieces to it. There, there, there's multiple webs involved, of like the brain and the thyroid and the gut, and the, the gut and the thyroid and the gut and, 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 the, and the immune system and, 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 and all these different things that relate to the thyroid that have to be worked up and then gotten under control. Well, once you've gotten them under control, that's called putting that person in remission. You have an, you know, the goal is not to cure you because I don't know anybody who knows how to cure Hashimoto's yet. And so the goal is to get you in remission and keep you there and then teach you how to keep it there one of the most powerful tools to understand how to keep it in remission is to understand whether it's, whether it's turned active or not. And the TSH is, is the best way. Uh, there, there's other ways, there, there's, there's other tests. They're much more, they're much, much, much more expensive. They're like in the 400 and some dollar range called TMB lymphocytes and natural killer cells. And um, you, you can run that, but the TSH is like, it's a cheat thing. People, they run it every day in lab core. They run a zillion of them a day. The more you run in a lab, the less expensive it is. So if you run like 100 TMB lymphocytes or 100 TSHs every day long, but you run one every week of the TMB lymphocytes, that one's gonna be much more expensive. That's how they decide those things. So the TSH really can be a valuable, valuable tool. For those who understand it, it can be a valuable tool to um, to, to manage your thyroid during treatment. It can be a, a valuable tool to manage your thyroid when you're in remission and catch things before they start to get out of control, before they get, or, or after they've been triggered by a stress or by a pregnancy or by a surgery or by an infection or something like that. So we're finding it is, it is useful in so many more ways for the Hashimoto's patient than just 
it's TSH. Your TSH is normal. Bye. It was nice knowing you. Talk to you in a year. So that's TSH and Hashimoto's, and we'll probably talk to you sooner than a year. <laughs> so see you then. Thank you for joining us for another episode of What is Hashimoto's? To find out more on any of our topics or for information on scheduling a consultation with Dr. Rutherford, please visit us at whatishashimoto's.com.